Well, I'm really looking forward tonight to talking to the night sky guy, and I know you're looking forward to hearing what he has to say. Space news is coming up. We'll talk about the Geminid meteor shower. Lots of stuff, interesting stuff to get to. Andrew Fazekas is on the phone with us. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Carrie. How have you been dealing with the snow in Montreal? Uh, shoveling and shoveling <laughs> all back. the time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, it, wants, it makes you want to be young again, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, it's giving my back a good workout, yeah, I'll tell you sure. that. You got to take it easy. All right, let's get right down to it and let's uh, start talking about what's going on up there rather than what, all the snow that people are having to deal with. So let's talk about uh, the, the meteor shower because this has been going on a while. What can people expect as of late with this? Well, what's really cool is if you've got clear skies, even in the last few nights, uh, you may have seen some really nice streaks of light shooting stars. This is really going to ramp up over the course of the weekend. So if there is a peak time to the Geminid meteor shower, which is considered, by the way, as the best meteor event of the year, even surpasses the summer perseids in August. But it just doesn't get all the attention because it's in December when it's so cold. But it's worth going out after 8 p.m. into the early morning hours of Monday morning at 4 a.m., you'll be able to see at, uh, anywhere from 30 to 140 shooting stars per hour. So this is a fantastic show. Of course, the best views are from a dark site if you're far away from the city lights. So all the light pollution really cuts down. But even if you're in a suburb of a large city, on Sunday night uh, after 10 p.m., you may see as many as 30 to 60 meteors per hour shooting across the sky. So the Geminids is really a beautiful show. What a great holiday, pre-holiday fireworks show to end the night. And, you, uh, and you, can, you can really see this best if you look towards the east, no telescope or binoculars, just look towards the eastern sky, uh, Gemini constellation where it, all the meteors seem to radiate out from. Uh, is rising above the eastern horizon around 8 p.m., 9 p.m., and that's when you, the, the show really starts kicking in. So this is great for people who are really novice at something like this, who are, it's, you know, have an interest but don't really know where to look because this is such a grandiose event that's going on over the next little while. So uh, I hope folks do that, and of course we'll give everyone your website so they can get further information on that. But this next story, let's get to Space News, Andrew, because I found this incredibly fascinating because out of a problem became, well, a supreme discovery and, and I want you to talk <laughs> about the rover what's going on in space news yeah you know this is where it's amazing where uh, the scientists have really turned something that looked like the the real end of one of the Mar intrepid Mars rovers into something that was some totally unexpected and, and a great discovery one of the Mars rovers that have been uh, bouncing around on Mars for over six years now uh, named spirit has been stuck for the last six months in a sand pit basically just revving its, its, its motors and trying to get its wheels out of a sand trap, but it hasn't been very successful. But in the course of doing that, if you look on the picture, you'll see all that white stuff that's on the left-hand side of the screen. You see that stuff where it's dug into its wheel. It's dug out a lot of material uh, of, of the soil, and it's, that soil is full of sulfates. And this mineral is a key indicator that this site was full of water, maybe even a lake filled with water. That's, uh, that's how much that might have been in the sand. And they were, they were so surprised, the sign. They weren't expecting it because it looked bone dry. But because of this predicament, it was able to dig its wheel into the soil and, and, and see this. And you can see on this image what the uh, artist's uh, sort of computer simulation shows how the, how the uh, rover is actually positioned now. It's in a precarious uh, uh, you know, uh, angle there, but um, it can still get out, hopefully. Yeah, amazing discoveries in, really, as you say, adverse times. You know, we only have a couple seconds left, Andrew, and we could sit here and chat all night. Tell everyone uh, just your website and how people get more information with only 15 seconds to go. Right, you want to know where and when to see the Geminids and other stargazing news? Head off to my website, thenightskyguy.com. All righty, thanks so much, Andrew. You have a terrific weekend. All righty, we'll continue following all the stories right across the country.